everybody. Uh, Rick here from the uh, Fultz Bailey Model Railroad. Uh, I've got a little project here that's not necessarily railroad related, but we can use it on the railroad. Let's go over the workbench. We'll take a look. All right. What I've got here are four components uh, that we're going to use to put this project together. Um, we're going to be using a multimeter to do some testing. I've got an old power supply. Actually, it's a brand new power supply from a computer. I've got its power cord and I've got this bad boy, which is a power adapter breakout board. And what are we going to use this for? We are going to try and use this to power some, put some DC power underneath of our layout. Now, I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with model railroads? Well, <clears throat> if you've got uh, any kind of accessories underneath of your, um, underneath of your railroad, like lights, signals, uh, tortoise switch machines, uh, Arduinos, uh, anything that takes a uh, uh, low voltage DC uh, power, this guy is going to help power that. Uh, you can use this to provide that power because it's got enough amps in it to supply almost everything you need. I use one currently for all the LED lights that are underneath of my second deck. Uh, to light up the, the bottom yard when, when I'm down there doing some switching. So let's get back over here, and I'm going to show you how to hook it up and what it's used for and how it kind of integrates into things. All right, so uh, one thing, we're going we're gonna to take a look at the power supply real quick um, so I can show you what this is and what it, uh, what it means. If you notice, there are a bunch of numbers right there on that little table. Those are very, very, very important. Uh, we're only going to pay attention to the first three because the bottom three are all negative numbers and nobody these days works in negative voltages. So those top three numbers are there um, to, uh, uh, to show you how the power works. So the very first one, 3.3 volts at 28 amps. What does that mean? That means anything that will take 20, uh, 3.3 volt, like your standard uh, LEDs, your little bulbs, they work on three, three volts. You can use all of those up to 28 amps of power. That is a lot of light bulbs. Uh, the second one there is your plus five volts. And we can use the plus five volts all the way up to 36 amps. I'm trying, I'm trying. So anything that you've got that's five volts, you can use up to 36 amps. Now, you can go and put three volt uh, LEDs on your layout and add some resistors to it to get it down to three volts. And you can use uh, all of those bulbs up to 36 amps. That's a lot of power. Uh, last but not least, you got your standard 12 volt, which you can only get 16 amps out of. Now, all of your or most of your LED strip lighting that you get now all works off of 12 volts. So you can, if you do your math and find out how much of those uh, the amperages, those LEDs work off of, add all of them up and you'll find out what the total amperage is. And you just got to be under 16 amps. Now, uh, fair warning, you're working with electricity. These amps can be deadly if you don't know how to work with electricity properly, I suggest that you do not take this box apart. Do not make any alterations to it. Use it with the breakout board the way it's designed. Be careful. Be safe. Always work with your electronics with the power off. Now, with that being said, let me tell you a couple benefits about this box that I absolutely love. Uh, this box was actually built in 2019. That's what the stamp says on it, 2019. Um, it's an external power, or it's an internal power supply from a computer. Now, this was bought separate from a computer. You know how you know that? It's got its own power plug right here. It's got its own power switch. A lot of times, you, you can take one of the power supplies out of an old computer um, and do exactly what you're doing, but nine times out of ten, you're not going to find that switch. Um, this is only supplied normally on, you'll find it on older uh, power supplies because that was kind of the standard. Um, and now if you've ever built your computer or you've, uh, you've purchased computer parts and this was one of them, you're going to find that switch on there if you get this as a separate unit. Um, 
You got your input right there. This is where your power cord is going to go to feed some power from the outlet to your unit. Uh, and then there's a big old fan in there to keep this thing nice and cool uh, while it's working, while it's running. Now, there's a bunch of cords over here. Oh, my gosh. It's so easy to get confused of what you're going to need. How do you tell the difference? Well, all of these cords here that have all these funky ends on them, they're all for the computer. We don't need those. So we're going to put a rubber band on them, and we're not going to worry about them. This one here, this big hunk and chunk and thingy here, this is what we're going to play with. This is what we need. So what we're going to do is put this guy right here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to plug this thing in so that we got some power to it. Safety first. I'm going to make sure that the switch is turned off. And then I'm going to plug this into the outlet from my power strip right here off camera. Now, we got power. That means we should be able to do stuff, right? Well... Even if I turn this on, look, ah, the fan doesn't move. Well, why is that? Because in order for this system to be used, to be idolized, it has to have a load on it, which means it's got to be powering something. And we don't have this plugged up to anything yet, so it's not really going to do anything. So let's turn this back off, and I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to explain to you what this guy is. This is a power breakout board. It is designed to work with this power supply so that all you have to do is plug that cable into there and it breaks out all of the different voltages on different pins. There's three volts. Right next to that right there is five volts. Right next to that right there is 12 volts. And over here is that negative 12 volts that we're not even going to use or not even going to pay attention to. Also, this board offers a couple plugs on the end of it. There's those pin plugs. Uh, that you can also get 12 volts off of. There's an, a three pin plug and a four pin plug. Uh, there's also a USB port right here that you could plug in like your cell phone or anything else that takes five volts. This here is tied directly into the five volt pin. There are multiple LEDs on here to let you know that each thing is powered up and ready to go. Most importantly, or second to important, there are fuses here. So if you ever go above the limit of what you should be using and you pump too much current through it, those uh, fuses, they're going to pop and it's going to shut down that circuit. Only that circuit. The other ones will still work unless you pop those two. Um, real easy fix would be to remove your load and then replace the fuse and you should be good to go. Uh, the very most important thing on here is this power switch. Again, we don't want to be working on anything that has live power unless you intend to and safety first. So we're going to keep that off. So now I'm going to hook this up here. This thing can only be plugged in one way. It will not go in that way. These things are designed. They have different curves and shapes on them so that it can only fit in those plugs in a certain way. So this has a little tab right here on the top. We're going to plug this guy in. That's got the little uh, lock on it. Click it in place. It's a little tough, but there it is clicked in place. Now, here we go. We're going to turn on our power supply. Still got nothing on the fan. Now we're going to turn on this guy. Ooh, we got some LEDs. I don't know if you can hear it, but now the fan is rolling. And the good part is if you turn this off, it shuts down the power supply. Also, you can see the fan coming to a stop. Same thing is going to happen if this was on. You see how that fan starts up? Now we're going to shut that off. And it's going to shut that down. And you'll see the fan stop here. So in both places, you have a kill switch. So let's turn that back on. And uh, let's do some testing with this thing. And see how far we got. We've got our uh, multimeter here. And I'm going to set it to uh, 20. Uh, the setting of 20 um, for DC power. Take off my safety clips here. You can see right now we are at zero. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go over here and we're going to test the three volts. I'm just going to go right in here to the pins. And you're going to see on the multimeter, we've got 3.36. Going to do the same thing over here on the five volt. And again, five volts right there. Let's go to 12 volts. And there is 12 volts. And just for the sake of the argument, let's do 
almost negative 12. Just gonna set that aside for a second. Um, so what can you do with these things? Well, they they've got these little. Um, I'm gonna turn this off now because I don't I don't want to I don't want to touch something or do anything. Turn that off as well. I'm gonna unclip this so I can move around. Very tough to get out. All right, so these things have little knobs on them that you can stick like a spade connector into. You could put a bare wire, but I don't suggest it. Um, put a spade connector on there. Um, you also have, I believe, you, if you wanted to, you could get, I don't have mine near me, but uh, the, the, the plugs, these plugs, these won't because have, these have sleeves on them, but they do make plugs like these that have just a post in them that I believe will go in there and will fit in so you can use a set of alligator clips or something to, to hook up to power. Um, but yeah, you can mount this under your workbench. You can mount this under your workbench and then you can use the appropriate three volts um, and everything from directly from here. Uh, rather than having to worry, if you look at some of the videos out on YouTube, people have been cutting these cables and stretching them out and doing this and doing that. I didn't have the patience for that. I'm going to pop up here the, the uh, link that I saw or the page that I bought this from from our good friends over at Amazon. Uh, guys, check it out. Uh, if this is something you're interested in, again, very easy to set up, very easy way to get power to your DC stuff under your layout. This thing kicks out a lot of power. It is a, I believe it is, where's my box? The box this thing came in says it's a 480 watt power supply. So a lot of amps kicking out of this thing, guys. Um, again, safety first. Make sure you're always working with the power off. You don't want to get electrocuted. We want to see you guys make more videos. All right, so there it is, Rail Riders. Yeah, that just happened.